Hey, it's Jeff Gibbons here, and this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to use Native Instruments expansion packs. So for this video, I'm going to mostly be using Opaline Drift, which is a new expansion pack. And I'm going to show you how you can access some of the different instruments and groups and use some of the audio loops that come with the library as well. So let's get right into it. And as you notice, my machine is now in a nice wooden case built by artswooddesigns.ca. So you can see he makes all sorts of custom stands and record crates. And this one costs $130. It is fantastic. I just love it. I just got it today and it, um, it just fits perfectly in there. So it slides right in and feels great. It's solid. The thing doesn't move when I'm playing and this hand rest is just really nice. So onto Opaline Drift. If I click the browser button, I'm sure most of you are going to want to start from scratch. So let's skip the projects and go over to the groups. So groups are where we're going to normally find our drum kits and start playing the pads. And so if I go over to the browser, so again, click the browser button, Opaline Drift, and go over to the right side here, I can see all the different kits. And if I press Shift Pre here, I can hear them. So let's load this group right here. And right away, if I click the pad mode button, I can see all the different sounds that I've got on here. And one thing that you'll notice is that half of the pads don't do anything, which can be kind of frustrating if you come from the other expansion packs where most of them have a drum kit that you could sit there and play. You'll find that a, a number of these are actual audio modules, so you're not going to hear anything if you hit the pad button. And one thing you could do is, is go through your different sounds, and we can see that this one is an audio module, it's not doing anything. And if I click the plug in button, you can see that it is indeed an audio module. And so if, right now what I can do is I can click this, the 4D encoder, and then go over to the right and change this to a sampler. And watch what happens if I load it as a sampler. Now it's going to play the loop. So this is a way you can turn these audio modules into samplers, which you can then hit with the pad. Sometimes you might want that, but in other cases where it's something like a loop, you might realize, you know what, triggering that loop every time isn't going to be that beneficial to me. What you might want to do in this case is take this loop and turn it from a one shot that's just going to go over and over, turn it to an ADSR. And if I do that now, and let's turn off this beat delay as well, because that's probably going to... So there's the loop. And now if I take my finger off the pad, the loop stops. Okay, so we can sort of feel that loop happening there. And now it's just going to work like a trigger whenever I press the pad. So if I want that in the song, looks like it's at 102 beats per minute. Let's just keep things simple and set the tempo to 102 beats per minute here. So we'll go 102 and then let's chuck this in. Let's see what happens. So let's shift quantize that. Actually, that went the wrong way. Let's move that over. And we'll just resize this so that it is exactly two bars long. There we go. And then now when I press play, this is one way you could work with any sounds that are audio modules that you want to just trigger like a pad. You could, of course, keep it as the audio module and use it in um, gate mode. And then you could use the, the button to trigger that sound whenever you want. So let's see what that looks like. Let's go back to pad mode and find another one. Okay, let's try this synth chord drift. Uh, so let's go to press, press the plug-in button. We can see the audio module and then we can see loop. Let's press gate. So when we play it in gate mode, what that means is every time you press play, you're going to hear the loop only if you hold down the pad. I'm going to press start and let's try recording something.
Okay, so now we've got a fun little sort of rhythmic thing happening with this pad being triggered only every time I hit the, the note. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quantize these because I want this little gate thing to be perfectly on the beat. So I'll press shift quantize and those are now perfectly timed with the beat. So that's kind of cool. It's working with gate mode. It's the different way of working with things, you know, and uh, it saves me turning this into a sample and chopping it up. Let's go look at another sound on here. Okay, so these are all audio modules. I do wish that these packs would come with audio modules, maybe in a different color, so then you could see right away that that's an audio module. It's not gonna make a sound when you hit it. So what you can do is just right click in the software, not on the hardware. I can't figure out a way to do that. I don't think there is. And what I can do is go over here to the software and change the color of any pads that are audio modules and that I wanna keep as audio modules. So I want to keep this blue one as audio module. We're going to leave it just like that. And let's go to the next one, pad drift. Okay, so I just pressed record and I chucked in all of these audio modules just by pressing the pad itself, by triggering the pad. And it chucks all of the audio onto your sequencer. And what I can do now is I can mute these just by turning them off for now. And then we can have a listen to them and see what we think. And you just right click any one of these and it will solo it and mute the others or control click. And now I can just press play and listen to each audio loop that's on a different pad here. Okay, I really like this one, number 10. And what I'm going to do is chop it up into little slices. And so I'm going to load this onto a different group. So I'm going to go over to group A and I'm going to press duplicate on number 10, copy that to B1. And so now we can see that same sound is now on pad one. So now what I need to do is go over to my plugin instance, press that button. I click the 4D encoder and then I, on the right hand side, turn this into a sampler. So now you can hear the pad. I'm going to choke that and what I'm going to do is go over to sampling, press sampling and now we can see this entire loop in the little editor here and I'm going to go to slice and I'm going to start finding um, slice points for this loop. So let's see if maybe we'll do this manually. So what you do when you set it on manual mode for the slicer for something like this where it's not really on a grid um, and I just want to choose the specific points where I want each next slice to start. I click the first pad and then as soon as I hit a point where I want another slice, I just hit the next pad and it makes a new slice right there. So watch this. Okay, let's start it again. And then I can just hit pad three and start again. I don't want that one. I'm going to undo it. Hit this pad again. And then, perfect. So now I've got my different slices in there, all made with this manual slicer. And then what I can do is click on each slice. So if I do want to change the start and end time of a slice, all I need to do is navigate to the second page up on these, with these uh, arrows right here. So you'll see I'll go to the second page. I'm on the first page, I go to the second page, and now I'm on slice six, and I can trim where that starts and ends. So let's go like this. And then go to the next one. That works there. So I'm happy with the slices that I've got in there. So I hit apply and put it right onto the first pad in this group. And now, Last thing I would probably do on this one is set the type to ADSR. I just want them to trigger only when I'm holding the pad down. So now we're going to make a beat. I've just gone through and muted the audio modules that I don't want to hear for right now.
cool. So we got a neat little beat, some kind of funky groove going on. And then now let's go have a look at this synth thing and see if we can work that in. Let's add some reverb onto this guy as well. Here's a meta verb. Let's put that in there. Let's go over to uh, Group C and check out some of the instruments in these expansion packs and how you can access those. Let's go to Massive. Okay, so the way to see if your virtual instrument has any new sounds in it from this expansion pack is to go over to your virtual instrument and then go to where it says All Banks and see if there's anything from that expansion pack in this virtual instrument. So there we can see Opaline Drift, and this is going to show you all of the patches for, for Massive that have some kind of sound from Opaline Drift. So let's have a listen. Ooh, I like this Desert King. Let's load that one up onto this group. And I'm gonna hit the keyboard button because I wanna play it like a keyboard. Shift record. Now I've got a bass sound coming from Massive from the Opaline Drift library on this little song. Let's go to another group and then hit the browser. Get to Monarch right there. And then go to All Banks and scroll down to Opaline Drift. And then we can see the Monarch patches. So I just go through. Okay, let's try loading up this one. Hit the keyboard tab. And I can see I'm a few octaves too low, so we'll take it right up. Okay, that's fun. Let's record that. So I think that's probably good enough for this tutorial, but you can get an idea of how you can work with these libraries in different ways. And I think it's a fun way to work with sounds, and I really like the sounds, so uh, I think it's just a question of turning it into something that is uniquely your own and just putting your own spin on it. So turn it into sample modules, chop it up, create something new out of it that is not going to be in anybody else's song and now you've got something unique and you're working with this as kind of a starting point. So I hope this was helpful and gives you an idea how to work with expansion packs. So hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching.